and a good chance of even higher utility rates. In the weather, a major storm is headed toward the Midwest. And in sports, Hayden Fry is hopping mad. To Center 7, next. No gimmicks, no fast talk, no razzle-dazzle deals built into the price. Just a serious effort to make you satisfy with the car you buy and the price you pay. Compare Reed Cadillac Oldsmobile, you'll see. Here's what we mean. Just in, the brand new 84 Cutlass Supreme Coupe. And we've cut the price. Lists at almost $12,000, now just $10,450. Compare Reed Cadillac Oldsmobile today. You can't afford not to. Channel 7, KWWL, Waterloo, Cedar Rapids. On New Center 7 tonight, this shovel full of dirt marks the beginning of 100 new jobs for Traer. A new company is coming to town. And a lot of people are pooling their efforts to keep the needy warm and well this winter. The unemployed of Black Hawk County are the targets. This is the New Center 7 6 o'clock report with Ron Steele, Liz Mathis, Sports Director Bob Hogue, and meteorologist Craig Johnson in the Weather Center. Good evening. When you talk about 100 jobs in a town of just 1,700 people, you're talking about a big development. And that's just what is happening in the Tama County community of Traer. Sheldon Ripson reports on a new metal stamping factory that's coming to town. The day was damp and dreary, but spirits were anything but that when ground was broken for Treyer's new metal stamping operation. It'll be known as the Treyer Manufacturing Company, a division of Diomatic Incorporated. The factory will stamp metal component parts for such companies as John Deere, Massey Ferguson, and International Harvester. The Treyer site will be the fifth Diomatic plant in Iowa. Treyer was one of the communities that we worked with with the Iowa development, and the community involvement uh, has just been outstanding to help us get the thing off the ground at this point. The old Trayer Auction Company barn will start coming down Wednesday to make way for a 50,000 square foot plant. Depending upon the weather, operations are expected to begin around April. 15 to 20 people will be employed by then, but when up to full speed in June or July, it'll mean 100 new jobs and a yearly payroll of a million and a half dollars for the local economy. We like our employees to be part of the operation and uh, we feel the chair, the involvement the city has given us up to this time has just been outstanding. And I think the whole city is behind it. And we need that. And we need them and they need us to make the marriage work. The city is also allowing the firm to sell $3 million in industrial revenue bonds to help pay for the construction. In Traer, Sheldon Ripson, New Center 7. Peck says he'll start hiring people when the factory is complete after the first of the year. The Noran Company in Cedar Rapids had a $40 million pizza party this noon. The company is celebrating its largest contract ever. Norand will provide special menu ordering equipment for at least 2,500 Pizza Hut restaurants and perhaps all 4,000 Pizza Huts. The equipment will allow waiters and waitresses to transmit customers' orders without running back to the kitchen. Noran President Arnold Sunday says other restaurants are interested in the same equipment and contracts, which will only mean more business and more jobs. At this point, though, Sunday has no idea how many more people will be hired to fill the orders. Human services agencies and elected officials in Black Hawk County have decided to pool their resources to help poor people pay their winter heating and food bills this year. A central clearinghouse committee has been set up to get faster help to those people with immediate needs. Roy Walker has a report. These representatives of local agencies are committed to improving ongoing needs of the poor and elderly. They met in force to discuss what money resources are available to help the low income and the new poor meet their winter heating and food bills. Meeting those needs will be more complicated this winter as 2,000 more people exhausted their unemployment benefits last month alone. On top of that, 15% more Iowans are expected to apply for fuel assistance monies. However, less money is expected to be available for that program. We're always referring people, um, and it's really sad the way the situation is. There is not enough money, and something really should be done about it. We have people that have been shut off for months, and we still don't have them on. And especially if you're dealing with a family with little children, uh, that's when it's really sad. As soon as they, uh, they can shut them off or kick them out in the street, that's what's going to happen to them. There's not enough there for them to go around after you get three or four months into the winter. There's not, after they pay the rent, 
and try to pay the utilities, they're not going to make it. There's just not enough there. I don't care what people, anyone says. 10,000 families that need help. And it's really time to get a committee together that can sit down and figure out what is where and how you can best use it all. We can sit here for three days and talk about this, and we aren't going to get input. And I think we ought to get on with it. How much money have we got? Who, who has how much to give to help people with utilities, with this and that? So that's my suggestion. The Blackhawk County Clearinghouse Committee will decide what assistance is available, the guidelines for its clientele, and just how to get the dollars to the people in need. Roy Walker, News Center 7. The committee says it expects to be ready to clarify the assistance available within about a month or so, and then will also nail down a site from which to conduct the services. An Iowa City manufacturing plant says tonight it's eliminating seven jobs from its workforce. Procter & Gamble says the move will reduce its employee numbers down to 470. The company packages toothpaste, shampoo, and other products. The Iowa Commerce Commission has approved an electrical rate increase for Iowa Public Service Utility Company. The nearly $20 million request was trimmed to $18 million, but that's not all. The commission also ordered IPS to come up with an entirely new rate structure. It could mean higher prices for residential customers. The ICC says IPS is charging its large industrial customers 20% too much. The cost, it says, should be evened out. We'll know how much it will cost us by next summer sometime. And in another utility case tonight, this one involving the Federal Communications Commission and the telephone company, AT&T and Ma Bell were fined $80,000 for breaking the rules in how they sell and lease their telephones. An important rent control issue is on the ballot in Iowa City. And Gary Sarnoff is standing by live with an election preview, so don't go away. It takes lots of money to operate a farm. There's machinery, crops, livestock, and lots more. And we understand. At PCA, we're here to help you because our business is financing agriculture. So let's talk. When you got a plan that needs an operating loan, count on PCA. We're here to help you. Plan it your way with PCA. Let's talk. Let's talk. I knew I was a good corn grower. I just didn't know how good. Not until I harvested this DeKalb Pfizer T1100. T1100 really responds to my kind of management. Seems like the better job I do, the better T1100 does. And it's making my customers proud, too. Who's convinced you'll put more bushels in your bin? I am. It's election day here in eastern Iowa and across the country, and if you have not been to the polls yet, you are not alone. Voter turnout is reportedly very low in many areas. Right now, Gary Sarnoff from New Center 7 is standing by live at a Waterloo polling place with a live report. Gary? Well, Ron, if voting is indeed exercising your right, then many eastern Iowans aren't even working up a sweat. Here at West High School in Waterloo, the election officials report a strong start to municipal election day but then the turnout had slowed down and is now finally picking up again. Other precincts in Waterloo also say the levers haven't been flipping out, although some say the turnout has been higher than in the last city election. Officials had hoped for a better turnout since for the first time in 10 years, Waterloo residents will be electing a new mayor. Incumbent Leo Roof is retiring after five terms and Waterloo voters have a choice of four candidates to replace him. There are also 21 candidates running for seven Waterloo City Council seats. In Cedar Falls, voter turnout is even slower, but that may be due to the fact that Mayor Doug Sharp is running unopposed and there are only two contested city council seats in Cedar Falls. There are other council races all over the state of Iowa and that controversial fair rent ordinance being decided upon in Iowa City. Blackhawk County Election Commissioner Isabel Frerix is hoping that voter turnout will pick up now that everybody's home from work, but remember, the polls close at 8 o'clock tonight, so you only have less than two hours to go to exercise your rights. We'll have the results from as many races as possible and also talk to some of the winners tonight at 10. This is Gary Sarnoff reporting live from West High School in Waterloo. Now back to you, Ron. 
All right, Gary, thank you very much. Live report. We'll have all the reports for you tonight at 10. Liz, what about some of the other activities? Well, it seems like all across eastern Iowa voter turnout is reported very light. In Cedar Rapids, for example, only 5% of the registered voters had gone to the polls by mid-afternoon. That's less than half the turnout for the municipal election two years ago. In Cedar Rapids, only two of the five city council candidates face contested races. But voters are being asked to decide a $4 million bond referendum for new fire stations. And as Gary told us, in Iowa City, the key issue of the day is whether to establish a fair rent control board. Even with that controversial issue, the county auditor says there's no real evidence that the rent control question is attracting a heavy student vote. So far, the city voter turnout is also described light, but about equal to the turnout of 1981. The Waterloo Fire Department is calling it arson. Fires, firefighters say that a vacant house on the city's east side was deliberately set on fire overnight. The blaze was reported at 5.30 this morning by a paper boy who lived next door to the home at 129 Mohawk. No one was injured, but the inside of the house was heavily damaged. Firefighters battled the blaze for over an hour and no arrests have been made. The heirs of three people who were killed in a car accident last June 2nd are suing for $700,000 in damages. The executor of the estates of Paul Lloyd and Pauline Elliott contends that Edna Meester was negligent when the car which she was driving crashed into the Elliott car on Highway 21 south of Waterloo. Also named in the suit is Edna's husband, Harlan Meester. The head of Iowa Corrections says the state's plan to limit the number of inmates in prison is working. But while Hal Ferrier admits that the public might be safer if all prisoners serve their full terms behind bars, he says that would be very expensive. Details from Brian Franz. Honor, uh, Ferrier told a meeting of the state's county attorneys that Iowa's prison population end. lid of 2,645 is working because it gives the parole board flexibility. Iowa chose to go to the cap and it has kept our population down. I think it's one of the better cap languages in that it requires a parole board to select the best candidates to go out and you don't just just chop off uh, uh, the people who are close to release uh, so that the parole board can choose the better people to, uh, uh, to release from prison. Ferrier says without the cap, Iowa's prison population would keep rising, leading to overcrowding, riots, court orders for improvements, and new prison construction at a cost of tens of millions of dollars. Ferrier adds the community-based correction centers are a cheap and effective substitute to the penitentiaries for many of Iowa's criminals. Brian Franz, New Center 7, Cedar Rapids. Ferrier believes the state sentencing system should be changed so that a 10-year sentence means 10 years in prison, not the two to four years as is so often the case. Farm prices were weak today. Rath hogs were steady with a top of $37. Iowa interior cattle were fully steady with a top of $60. Chicago grain futures, December corn down a half cent, November beans down eight cents. Northeast Iowa grain averages, corn up two and a half cents and beans down four and a half cents a bushel. The Dow Jones rose only slightly, less than one point to 1,214. Trading was slow, with only 65 million shares traded. The state has its first ever Racing Commission Executive Director. And the weather tonight and tomorrow won't be much better than it was today, but Craig says it won't be much worse either, so don't go away. this business, my dad gave me some advice. Spend your money wisely and save some for those dreams of yours. <laughs> well, getting ahead takes a choice of investment and high interest. The kind I get at Dubuque Bank and Trust. Like this business, they're making my goals a reality. I save at db and because just like dad, I love things that grow. The bankers to see are at db and &T. Ah. <sighs> What a great day to harvest. How's this field doing? Terrific. This is where we planted the new breed. Funk's new breed hybrids are here. Seven years of a new breeding program now brings you the new breed hybrids. Like G4342 with more consistent performance. They're better, all right, with performance you can bank on. Funk's G4342. Give it a try. There, I'm Diane Carraway. On the next PM Magazine, we're going to meet a real fast talker. I'll do haste my system to tabulate a word process and index and finally cross reference. His TV commercials made him a star. Watch him try to break his own world record. Then here's the new bad lady of the sizzling nighttime soap, Falcon Crest. Find out what she's up to and where she's heading. 
See how single men over 50 get paid to socialize with lively ladies on Love Boat Cruises. PM Magazine, tonight at 6.30, right here on Channel 7. We said it might be a little worse. Well, you said much worse after we... I think so. <laughs> It'll be raining in many areas of eastern Iowa tomorrow. Now, temperatures won't... The bottom won't drop out tomorrow, but there will be some colder air coming in tomorrow night. Actually, temperature so. today was very nice, so I assume it's going to drop, huh? That's okay. correct. Uh, and you think it was nice here. Southeast mm -hmm. Iowa was even warmer, almost mm -hmm. a real mild day in the southeast part of the state. But when it's mild this time of year, you know there's something uh -huh. coming, and there certainly <laughs> is this time. First of all, today a cloudy day. Some areas of drizzle around eastern Iowa, even some sun out over the southern part of the area for a time today. Waterloo, Ohio, 55. Cedar Rapids, 63. Dubuque, 61. Iowa City, a high of 63. Other reports from Cedar Falls, Charles City, Decorah, and Eldora. Elkader, Fayette, Hampton, and look at Loudoun in East Central Iowa, 64 this afternoon. Manchester, Marengo, Marshalltown, and New Hampton. Oldwine, Platteville, Wisconsin, Vinton, and Washington hitting 65 in southeast Iowa. Temperatures, though, show around the nation colder air to the north. Notice temperatures in the 30s across the northern plains today, then a belt of 40s, 50s, and 60s. And where's Iowa? Right in the biggest change in the whole country from southeast Iowa. Temperatures in the 60s today to readings around 40 in the northwest corner of the state late this afternoon. So often it happens that way, and today has been no exception. Saturday that picture shows a big storm brewing out to the west of us, a large area of cloudiness all the way from Colorado and Utah sweeping up across the northern plains. Some breaks in the clouds just barely showing up there, giving some sun to parts of southeast Iowa. That's the snowstorm out there. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes, but a rather large system is moving northeastward. The bulk of the snow will be northwest of Iowa, but there will be some snow on the state during the next 48 hours. On radar across the country, you can see where the rain has been occurring in parts of Minnesota and South Dakota. Snow back to the west and the rest of South Dakota down into uh, Colorado. We're moving to the time of year when radar is not that effective because the storm cloud tops are lower. Snow doesn't return as much of a signal to the radar. So I mean, many times you look at a national radar like this, it'll only show the portion of precipitation near the radar site. There could be snow falling over many, many more areas than being indicated by radar, and that is the case today. On the national weather map, we can pick up where that snow is. Area of low pressure is centered in Kansas and also in the Texas panhandle now. Back behind this is where the cold air is. To the south is where temperatures are rather mild, and the front is right across Iowa. Rain has been falling over portions of north central into western Iowa today, back into Nebraska and eastern Colorado. Snow has started in Denver, though, now. Shadron, Nebraska, has picked up three inches of snow. Laramie, Wyoming, has three inches. Casper, Wyoming, 12 inches. Lander has eight inches. And last night, Salt Lake City picked up two inches of snow. Winter storm warnings out tonight for north central Nebraska into much of South Dakota, and then the winter storm watches out for central Minnesota. Minnesota and northern Wisconsin for tomorrow as the storm system tracks northeastward. For us, as a, as a low pressure tracks over Iowa, it should produce a surge of rain up over the state later tonight and part of tomorrow. But as the low pressure tracks over the area, then skies will just be cloudy for uh, later in the day tomorrow, along with some drizzle around. And as it goes by tomorrow night, the colder air will wrap around it, and that's when we may see some flakes of snow, particularly over the western and northern portion of the viewing area. It should not cause any travel problems, though. If we check the uh, satellite picture, showing the upper Midwest, you can see that broad sweep of clouds across the upper Midwest, the main area of storminess westward, but that'll be thickening over Iowa, over all of the area during the night tonight and tomorrow morning. Radar from the National Weather Service in Waterloo showing some activity in the form of rain over portions of north central Iowa. It's moving slowly eastward around 10 to 15 miles an hour. Temperatures around the state showing 30s to, to around 50 in western Iowa. Spencer, this cool, cool spot at 39. There has been some snow at Sioux Falls late this afternoon. Decora 47, Mason City 42, Waterloo 54, Dubuque 50. Cedar Rapids 56, Iowa City 57. Outside now, humidities are high, winds out of the east and southeast, and barometers are steady or falling. Tonight's forecast, periods of rain, drizzle, and fog, except extreme east, central, and southeast Iowa. Just a few scattered showers there late tonight. Winds northeast to southerly at 10, and lows tonight 44 north to 55 in the south. Tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock, general area of rain spreading across much of Iowa. By 6 o'clock tomorrow evening, low pressure spreading into Iowa. Rain here, but snow wrapping behind it. For eastern Iowa then, periods of rain, drizzle, 
drizzle and fog and cloudy. Winds variable at 5 to 15 and highs tomorrow 50 north to 66 in the south. Ag forecast, poor drying conditions. Chances of measurable rain are rather high and humidity also high. For tomorrow night, windy and colder. Some rain or snow showers. Lows from 28 to 36. An extended outlook Thursday, mostly cloudy. Friday, a chance of showers. Saturday and Sunday, partly cloudy. Warming up a touch over the weekend. But Thursday looks windy and cold. <laughs> what snow showers we get tomorrow night should be in the west and northern parts of our area. Well, don't you enjoy windy and cold days? Oh, they're just great, aren't Fantastic, they? Fantastic, aren't they? Thanks. Maybe for one day only. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Craig. Liz? Why are Dubuque area tavern owners unhappy? We'll tell you why next. See, you bought a new Toro snow thrower. I sure did. But it ain't gonna snow much this year. Well, that's okay. With Toro's new snow risk program, if it snows less than 20% of average this season, I get all my money back. And I keep the Toro. All your money back? Mm-hmm. And you keep the Toro? Right. It's gonna snow more than 20%. Well, if it snows less than 50%, I get 50% of my money back. <laughs> you did good, son. <laughs> See your Toro at these participating dealers. You can win one of two dream vacations in the Instant Cash Travel Sweepstakes. I could be in California. Or you can win one of 15 trips on Republic Airlines or handsome luggage by Hartman. You know something? We could be living it up. Instant Cash takes you from coast to coast. Details at participating financial institutions and Norwest Banks. A lot of businesses have gripes about the government, but tavern owners have a mutual concern. They claim there are inequities between a tavern owner and a convenience store selling beer over the counter. A five-county tavern association met with Iowa lawmakers and Dave Norberg was there. The association feels restaurant and tavern owners are overtaxed and forced to live with an unfair image. They point directly to the convenience stores that sell beer. Tavern owners feel they have more control over their customers in a store that sells a six-pack to go. Yet it's a tavern owner paying the higher insurance and liquor permit. Uh, we didn't know if they knew it or not, but 83% of the, uh, the beer that is being sold in the state of Iowa is, is uh, due to the convenience stores, not the taverns or restaurants. That's the feeling of our association, the membership and the board, that uh, every time somebody goes out and gets drunk or and gets in an accident or something like that, it's, it's a tavern restaurant. It's not the liquor store or, or the convenience stores, the grocery stores, the drug stores, the uh, uh, filling stations. The legislators attending the meeting sympathize with the association. Tom Yoakum says the complaints are legitimate and some equity must be put back into the system. Abuse. abuse does not stem from the location that it's bought. It stems from the fact that it's bought and abused by a minority of the people and that, in fairness, everybody should have to pay their fair share. The association is asking legislators to remove the 15% liquor tax that businesses are forced to pay. The delegation told the owners that with financial problems in Iowa, they should fight to keep the tax from going even higher. Meanwhile, the association will fight for more equity between itself and the convenience stores. Dave Norberg, News Center 7, Dubuque. Lawmakers urge the association to get a strong lobbying effort rolling in Des Moines if they hope to see changes in the liquor laws. Iowa's new racing commission has its first ever executive director tonight. He's a man who should know his way around the tracks. Omaha's 35-year-old Jack Ketterer is the new executive director. He'll come here to Iowa from his job as director of security for the Nebraska State Racing Commission. He'll be paid $48,000 a year. The vote in favor of Ketterer was very close, 3-2 to two over the other finalist, Lloyd Masterson, a Chicago paramutual consultant. Ketterer says he is determined to make racing something Iowa can be proud of. He says he is in no hurry to license the first Iowa track. And Bob, what is going on in the world of sports today? Well, we're going to find out about a very, very abbreviated press conference in Iowa City. Mm. Sports is next. Stick around. Dubuque Five Flag Center presents Gordon McRae and Anna Maria Alberghetti in Broadway tonight, November 19th. Treat yourself to a night out and enjoy the magic of live entertainment. Hear songs from your favorite musicals by the stars who made them famous. Gordon McRae and Anna Maria Alberghetti on stage November 19th. For information, call 319-556-6997. The Five Flag 
If corn pests think they'll survive because of the trash left on your fields by conservation tillage, they're wrong, dead wrong when you use Counter. You can apply Counter banded or in the seed furrow so it won't get lost in the trash. Counter won't hurt corn seed and banded or in furrow, Counter controls more corn pests than any other product. For conservation tillage, Counter works best banded or in furrow, guaranteed. Hayden Fry's weekly press conference today was the shortest probably ever. Twelve minutes by our count, the reason Hayden was mad. No one knew why during the conference, but we found out later it was probably because of a remark Hayden made last week and the reaction to it. You'll remember we showed you tape of Hayden calling a reporter stupid last week after asking about the running up the score controversy. Well, later last week, Channel 2 sportscaster Howard James editorialized about that comment, saying that the reporter hadn't been stupid that Hayden was the stupid one. Knowing all this, here's how some of the press conference went today. You think when you hear things like Notre Dame being considered for the Fiesta Bowl, and they're only six or three right now. I don't know. You uh, lightened the workouts, uh, or the workout yesterday a little bit, and, uh, your team will be in solid shape for Michigan State and Oklahoma. There's a good chance there will be. How's your health? Pretty good. The Hawks, who were rated ninth last night by UPI, were tabbed for 12th by AP today. Nebraska still first, followed by Texas, Auburn, Georgia, and Illinois. The second five, Miami, SMU, BYU, Michigan, and Ohio State. Iowa is 12th. The Hawks face Michigan State this Saturday. It'll be interesting to see if the tight ends are as big a part of the offense as they were against Wisconsin. The tight ends became a big part of the Iowa offense again last Saturday, so much so that both the number one and number two tight ends caught touchdown passes, a real rarity. Mike Hufford has felt the thrill before, but for Big John Hayes, it was a totally new experience, his first collegiate touchdown. And Long will throw. Long has Hayes. Hayes, touchdown. Belated call, and Jonathan Hayes has a touchdown. When I caught the ball, I, was, I had an idea about where I was, but so I just kept, you know, fighting for it. And then when I ended up dying, I looked across the line there, and they have so many lines, I wasn't sure if I was over the soccer <laughs> line or the, the, the goal line. So. I'm not sure that the official knew either. You know, at first he wasn't going to give it to you, and then finally a belated call for a touchdown. Uh, well, I'm glad, belated or not, it was it counts for six on my record, so it makes me feel really good, and I'm glad I finally got one. Hayes is an affable young man and a very versatile athlete. Last year, you'll remember, he split time at linebacker and tied in. But this TD has added sweetness because he had dropped a couple of potential scores in earlier games. They say that first touchdown is the most special feeling in the world. Is it, is it that way, do you? Yeah, especially after I dropped one Northwestern <laughs> where it should have been the first one. So it really made up for it. I, you know, I'm glad I got that off my back. And I haven't, I haven't been playing as well as I'd like to this year. You know, I've, I've done my job, you know, but I, I'd like to have done a lot of other things and done them better. But I'm still happy with the way things are going right now. On the Iowa wrestling front, head coach Dan Gable announced today that he'll be putting his full concentration this year towards the Summer Olympics. That means that Jay Robinson will run the Hawkeye program for the most part. Robinson has been an assistant in Iowa since 1976. Finally in sports, Atlanta Braves center fielder Dale Murphy has been named the National League Most Valuable Player in Runaway Balloting. Murphy picked up 21 of the possible 24 first place votes. Andre Dawson of Montreal was second. Murphy hit 36 homers. He drove in 121 runs. He hit 302. He also won the Most Valuable Player Award last year. So Dale Murphy is really something. And I want to tell you, Hayden 
was not real, real happy today. Mm, it didn't look like it. The questions weren't coming too quickly either. No, no, no I think that uh, perhaps when he's in a mood like that, maybe the press is a little bit intimidated. No one knew quite Obviously. for sure what was going on at the mm -hmm. time, and uh, everybody got a copy of the editorial afterwards, and apparently that was the reason. Okay. okay. Thank you, you Bob. Thanks, Bob. Craig, the weather. Some rain, fog, and drizzle around tonight and tomorrow. All right, that's it for 6 o'clock. Tonight at 10, we'll have the up to the minute. Election results on the municipal elections around the area. All seven city council seats up for grab in Waterloo, along with the new mayor selection. Your mayor and council is also being determined. We'll have those totals, plus live reports, the victory celebrations. That's all tonight at 10. Be a magazine next. WWL Channel 7, Waterloo, Cedar Rapids.